It's about passion between the women and the men. Chris Dyer and his creative friends. Darling, ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm your artist friend Chris Dyer and this is a brand new uh, show that I'm doing for you guys. Uh, we are in the year 2020, it's the year of COVID and I used to have a, a YouTube show called The Adventures where I would travel the world and do all these exciting things in different countries and show you the culture of those different places but now I'm not traveling anymore. I hang out a lot in, in Montreal in my hometown and I wanted to keep on expressing myself through the video medium. And in this also, this time of COVID, a lot of people have been interviewing me for their own podcasts and interview shows. And, and it's always been very fun, but it's always about me and blah, 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 me, 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 me. And it kind of bores me. And I, I, I don't care about sharing the same Chris Dyer story over and over again. Meanwhile, I got a shitload of amazing artists, friends, creative people, top shelf amazing quality, beautiful, positive, creative souls that I hang out with all the time. Uh, some are well known, others not so much. Those things don't really matter. But I wanted to interview them in this new show that uh, I'm starting with you guys. I'm still trying to figure out the name. I think it's going to be called uh, Chris Dyer's Creative Friends. Uh, pretty straightforward. And yeah, uh, on this first show, I'm hanging out with my friend Danny Rebel. Uh, he's a uh, a uh, musician and an artist, which is perfect because, yes, most of my friends are visual artists, but I also will be interviewing musicians, so Danny is both. So I'm really stoked to hang out with him today. So, Danny Rebel, <laughs> how you doing, my brother? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Keeping, Keep on keeping on nice. with what's going on. Well, we, we met years ago uh, at some reggae shows that you were participating with, with uh, I think Vernon Maytone. Vernon Maytone. And yeah. uh, we got a common friend together, pro skater Barry Walsh. And then slowly we've been hanging out more, especially this year that I've been in Montreal more. And we've, you've come to the art jams. And it's always been a pleasure to hang out with you. So I, I'm getting to know you a little bit more these days. But uh, please tell our viewers uh, a little bit more about yourself. What do you do? Who you are? Well, I was born in the Philippines and grew up in Montreal. I'm a reggae musician. I'm in a reggae band called Danny Rebel and the KGB. We've been a band since 2007. And now I pursued my, uh, I wouldn't say career, I would just my new path of being an artist because I felt like I wasn't myself. Like a like, painter, you mean? Yeah. 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 You grew up in the Philippines. How how was that? No, I I came here when I was seven years old. My mom left me when I was fourteen months old in the Philippines to come here and work uh -huh. to bring my me, my sister, and my dad to Canada to have a better life. You know, land. exactly. And uh, you know, till today, I cannot thank her enough for doing all the work she did. I mean, my dad helped as well, but uh, it was you know she. She had to do, take a sacrifice, and uh, I didn't see her till I was like three years old, and then I didn't see her again till I was six, and then we were able to come to Canada, got our papers together. It was a long process of getting our papers ready, but yeah, she's she's the one. I don't know what I'd be today if. I stayed in the Philippines. I don't know Thank if I... Thank you, Mama. Yeah, how, exactly. how is the Philippines? Like, what's the vibe there? Do you remember it at all? Do you know much about it? Uh, what would have been of you if you would have not moved to Canada? Um, it was scary. There was some, like... There was more violence. And, uh, I mean, I guess wherever you go, there's violence. But just, it was a different intensity. And it's a developing country. Exactly. It's a third world country. So, um... But it made me open my eyes when I came to Canada, like how lucky we are to be here. You know, like back in, back home, we had to go, when there would be a drought, we had to go to the well to get some water. 
-hmm. that was like one of people's chores right you know to get water <laughs> the, the most minimal things and then when i came to canada there was like a bathtub i didn't know even know what it was like that's <laughs> you bathe in that and then there's the Man. faucet that says cold and hot so wait what you could this hot water you and cold have water options, you know? <laughs> sweet back home you had to like heat up your water you know <laughs> so so how do you like uh living in montreal in general as a adult that you are now like uh we both live in montreal we love our city what, what do you like about living in montreal you, you obviously haven't moved away so no no i love montreal for its grittiness its dirtiness it's always under construction <laughs> sometimes it's a little bit uh stressful but like i love it man i love the people like it's most people say um like oh like I hate Toronto or I hate Winnipeg. It's not really about the place, I think. It's about the people that you connect with. And uh, that's what Montreal is. Like, I've, I've, you know, there are some few bad apples here and there, but, like, there's mostly really um, just nice people, you know. Right, totally. I, I like how it's, like, just generally open-minded, the mm -hmm. vibe, the whole thing where, like, it's half French, half English. And we don't want to be fighting with each other all the time. Exactly. So you just got to, like, accept each other. So yeah. that acceptance Compromise. of... Yeah, acceptance yeah. of languages goes with acceptance of races and cultures. And we're all just kind of, like, mixing it up. And we can afford rent. So that's yeah. good, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's what I love about Montreal, you know? Like, mm -hmm. the, the fact that we can afford apartments and studios still. Mm -hmm. Not being too gentrified. Yeah. So, talking about studios, this is your studio, the Rebel Arc. Yes. Tell me a little bit about it. Um, our initial idea for this spot was um, my sister has been brainstorming about a place to open up a, like a rehearsal studio for bands. Because there's none around here in uptown Montreal. And it just fell through. And she's been watching my art here and there. And she was like, hey, what about... You have your own studio, and we could make it a thrift shop at the same time. I have like, she would have all these uh, clothes that she's been accumulating, collecting for the past seven years, and she's like, I could hang my clothes up there, and whoever comes up could buy the clothes, and they could check out your art at the same time, and you could have performers play like a little acoustic jam. Well, we can't do it today. That was mm -hmm. the initial plan of this this whole thing, but you know what? Right. I can't really do anything about that for now. But do people but, come up and buy yes. some old clothes? Some old clothes, like some some friends like uh, message me on Instagram or like Facebook, and they come up. And sometimes there would be uh, all the customers that the barbershop downstairs and the salon and the restaurant see my little sandwich board outside. They're like, "Oh, there's a thrift shop up there. Cool. It's like uh -huh. really hidden, but right. it's really homey vibe. That's what." my sister and I really envisioned and I can't thank her en enough for you know helping me with this awesome know, yeah I remember uh, I've only come to one show here it was an acoustic show that you had and, yeah yeah you know it was uh Callie was here mm -hmm. and just the, it, the place was packed you could yeah. barely move yeah. <laughs> and you were like in one corner playing your guitar but it was such a good vibe you mm -hmm. know it's like yeah. it's, it's that kind of like as you say gritty real rootsy vibes yeah, exactly. of creative Montreal that no I love bells so and whistles just right. realness yeah, yeah totally yeah. and we're all just drinking beers in yeah. a random spot of town <laughs> um so amazing I'm happy that it, it, it it's working out mm -hmm. um, so you been balancing music and art but music comes first right because that's been like your career or your path that you've been doing for longer right? um it's more I just I'm just juggling them all at once and I'm a father as well right. I like I have a, a seven-year-old and I'm juggling that with my art. But I think these days it's mainly my art. But I incorporate it as much as I do with my music. You know, I have to. There's no, like, oh, this one's less or that one's less. I have to do it all at once. I have to juggle it. But you used to focus just on the music. Just on the music, yes. Right. And, and how, I would... how did that go? Tell me about your, your music career, your accomplishments. Uh, you used to... Uh, tour, yes. where do you go? You just uh, put out a, a, a vinyl. Yeah, so that's, that's an it. accomplishment. Yeah, for sure. Um, we Like I said, we started in 2007. 
we were like a bunch of uh, just high school friends who were playing punk music. I was in a uh, punk band before this. And uh, we just met in that little venue called Lex. It's closed now. But it was a DIY, like, all-ages venue where all the punk bands would play. And that's how we all, like, sort of met. And we, we wanted to do something different because everyone was in a, either in a punk band or a metal band. No one was doing anything else besides that in a group of friends, mm -hmm. you know? So we wanted to do something different. What year is that, more or less? That was, like, 2006. Mm -hmm. That's when we were, I was like more of a solo artist, like playing reggae music. And the, the mid 2000s was also a really strong time for reggae music. I yes. remember I was like deep in the reggae scene at that time. Exactly. It was very popular. These yeah. days, less for some reason. But, um, uh, yeah, I would, I would say so too. But depending where you're going, of course. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, and there's so many like genres of, I mean, types of reggae music. Right. nowadays you know it's been spread out throughout the world so like mm -hmm. so after that we just uh kept playing music and this little um well they're pretty big they're still pretty big today a uh, record label called stomp records they've been just hearing us here and there and they decided to you know work with us so that we, we were given the opportunity to make a, a, a legit album because we did have a couple of eps and a record all the uh, we we did it all all ourselves we recorded it ourselves and um with this one we were actually given some funds to make a legit album mm -hmm. and uh, thank you to stomp records for like for the opportunity and that's when we made our second album blast off that's when we went on the road like cross canada a couple times we did a little bit of the states how was touring it was, it was dirty. <laughs> it was dirty. We were trying to, we were trying not to go to too many um, uh, hotel rooms because, you know, it's you can't really. It's not like what you see on TV. You know, you don't see uh, the bands waking up on on the floor of somebody else's uh, house, of the show you 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 were just playing with. You know and. Uh, it's uh, it's not. They don't show that much of the the greediness of being on tour mm -hmm. and you you your um, lack of sleep. You know you're always drinking and partying. That's what we that was me at the time. But like, yeah, but we had to experience like these days that. of like you know downloads. Touring is like the only way to make it. No? It's the only way to spread your music. But like, I mean, thankfully. Thank uh, the internet for for that opportunity as well to spread out your music. You know, since nowadays everyone's on their phone. You know, like uh, how do how do I get music? Oh, should I buy the album or do I just like mm -hmm. stream it on my phone? It's pretty. You know, people go with the simplicity. Yeah. And uh, the um, not simplicity, but uh, uh, more convenient. More convenient. That's it. That's the word. And. Yeah, we were just went on, we went on tour uh, across Canada a couple times and in the states, and then my daughter was born, so I had to take a little bit of a break from from the music. Like, I mean, I still kept writing music, and we kept playing shows like here and there, but like not long tours. We I wasn't able to go on like a whole month month and a half tour. Was was it fun touring? Like, do you got any stories that you know? Like, you remember, like, man, touring was worth it because of that one night. <laughs> um, I love touring because you get to connect with your audience, you know. And like, even after the shows, you after the show, what do you do? You just pack up your stuff, and you hang out with people who dug your music, and and that really means a lot to me when somebody goes up to you and says yo that song that you wrote it really like touched me and that was that that's the the juice right there for me uh, on making music and uh, it's really not about the money and you can't you can't just base it off of money yeah because it's the realness is what 
keeps you going, I think, in music. Totally. There's, I, I know a lot of musician friends that love making music, but it's mm -hmm. really hard to make money from it. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. they keep on going, you know? Like you always, have to be resilient. Right. Like you're and doing stubborn. It, <laughs> <laughs> you got to have passion. That too. You know, and have like true 100%. love for that vibrational, vibrational creativity and expression. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thank you for warriors like you that keep on putting the realness out there. Because it seems like in these, the, these days, the music that reaches most of the people <coughs> is just pure garbage from the radio, from mm -hmm. corporate agendas and messages that are totally superficial mm -hmm. and void of true uh, soul and meaning. Mm -hmm. So those who are actually doing that and putting out that vibration out in the world for those who actually make an effort to uh, access it, I yeah. think it's a great social... Uh, community service that you do of course and uh, you think you'll do music forever yes of course like I can't there's there's just songs that keep floating in my head that I have to keep writing down and I, I just can't stop it's a it's my drug like I know it sounds cheesy but it, it really is it helps with my uh, my confidence because a lot of artists struggle with self confidence and like being uh just knowing your self-worth you know it helps me with that and just connecting with people it helps me connect with people and i love just meeting people right totally and music and art is the best way to do it i think now you've not abandoned music like you'll always do it and you keep on working on a project but you've mm -hmm. transitioned more into the uh path that invest more time into making visual art and yes paintings Painting. mostly yeah tell me a little about that how do you get into it and you know what's your favorite medium what's your subject matter okay tell um, me about your art my art is uh you know i started it all started from watching my dad uh paint what uh when i was back home in the philippines he used to do some murals for like festivals like the he did the backdrop of uh, the stage, the stage decor. And he would do the backdrop of that and he would paint at home. And my dad would also make like bootleg shirts because you know, we're, we're, we live in the village and some people weren't able to, they couldn't afford to go to the city and you know, buy like a fancy Chicago Bulls shirt or whatever. So my dad would make a bootleg like Chicago Bulls shirt and like just, mm -hmm. you know, sell it in the village. Nice. And, you know, some, sometimes the eyes would be crooked, but that was, like, it's the beauty of it, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? And, uh, yeah, I just watched him do it. And I think he just, like, I inherited his, his talent with that. And for the longest time, I just wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a painter and draw. Uh, I, I used to call it, I want to be a drawer. <laughs> 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 My mom used to make fun of me because I, I used to say, I wanted to be a drawer, but... Like, I'll put your, my socks in you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, and now finally, at what age? We are like 30, I'm 33. 33. But I've been, I, I, I kept making drawings for my friends here and there and drawing on my pants, on my jackets. I was always creating stuff with my clothes. And I just, uh, like, after that, I, I got myself like a nine to five. Uh, as a stonemason, I was I, I studied it. I went to the states to get my, you know, my papers done for that. And yeah, I was I worked with a hammer and chisel, just chiseling on stone, making uh, dry laid walls. And dry laid is um, making walls with no mortar. And we would just you know how the Mayans did it, you know, okay. or like and then the 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 Irish tried to make it as well. So what do you mean? Like you cut the stone like really perfectly flat, so just everything. Just sometimes, sits sometimes on each it would other be perfectly? flat. Sometimes it would be natural, and we would just pin the insides to make it solid. But it's still flexible since our winter here it it it, um, it freezes. The ground freezes, but as soon as it thaws out, it gets all like it gets all wavy so it's more flexible for it uh, for the for the wall oh, okay, and okay. uh sometimes you know you you'd see walls with with mortar into it and like the next two years it starts to crack because of that that flowness 
And uh, yeah, I just learned that. 10 years of my life, I was doing that, and I, I was just tired of it. I was just, uh, it wasn't where my heart was. I was making money, but I felt like I was just making money to make money. But yeah, yeah I was, I, I needed to feed my soul more than feed my mouth. I mean, it's, it is important too, because I am, I am a dad, but it is also very important for me to be happy. And I want, and Kaya deserves that. My daughter deserves a happy dad. And I, yeah, yeah. totally. So tell me more about your art though. So you paint with acrylics. I paint with acrylics. You're very really? fast from what I've seen. <laughs> like you can do one of these paintings in like what, like a day or two? Well, it depends on, it depends on my inspiration. Right. Like lately I've been, I, f I feel like I've been like, I have to kick myself in the butt to like, uh, finish a painting but like you know it's always up, ups and downs you know some some day some days i would finish like three paintings in one day just 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 like that but like you know it's it's never it's never on the up it's always up and down like that right and and you use uh, you, acrylics and you got this kind of like rough around the edges kind of reggae-ish style right? yes i love that and i also grew up with punk rock and i love the just dirtiness of just like how like like how I love my city. It's dirty and perfection is not really my pain my main focus. It's just it's me and I do a lot of portraits. I do a lot of um like artists that I love. I love uh, I love painting uh my my own city and I like putting my favorite artists in the scene of where I live. You know, it's part of me. And uh, so you show your love for the musicians that you resonate with exactly in scenarios that are very much your hometown, which probably a lot of these musicians haven't been to. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like just stuff that I that I have in my head. You know, I like I like to put that on on a canvas. So has it been working out the whole art thing? Uh, how long have you been doing it since you really jumped into the art? Um, I've been doing it for I've been painting since I was a kid like I was but drawing a but as a career I've only started jumping in like two years ago so like it's very I've, recent. yeah I I was doing it on the side uh with my stone masonry job but I find I was just like sleeping on my canvases like I got I get home from a like a 14 hour day then I would you know be a dad and then when she was asleep when she'd be asleep, I would just work on a canvas and then I just find myself waking up with paint all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you know, that's the life. But at the same time, I was never really uh, a long uh, sleeper kind of guy. I don't really sleep that much. I'm like, I'm very nocturnal creature. How many hours do you sleep? At least like five to six hours a day. That's mm -hmm. my... That's okay. That's still something, but I'd be tired if I only slept yeah. five hours a night. Yeah, I need my eight. <laughs> Beauty sleep. <laughs> yeah, eight, nine, whatever my body wants, I'll give it to them, to but, yeah. it. But uh, so since you started your art career, has it been working out? Have you been able to make a living from it? Like, how's it going? So far, so far it's going great. I mean, like, I think, uh, I thank you. I think. You know all the 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 artist friends who you know uh, basically get me inspired on doing this as a living. You know, and also the people who listen to my music. You know, some of them didn't know that I painted, so like they're already my fan base with my music are like supporting me with my art as well. And like people are just angels. Like I meet a lot of angels in my life, and I like I can't think you guys enough nice. you know <laughs> is it mostly montreal clients or is it uh worldwide uh lately a lot of uh, my my customers have been in the brooklyn area in new york and in la okay nice like that area because they love reggae music every time i paint like a reggae artist they're like oh i want this one uh-huh is it still available like, uh, what's your prices like more or less um i guess it depends on the size and the hours I spent on it. Like, I don't know. 
what would be the most expensive one that you, you have moved so far? Something you spend a lot of time that you're like, yes, I sold that one. Uh, I, it's not here. <laughs> the wow. three by four is this one. Uh -huh. This one I, I, I sold for 15. Mm -hmm. 15, well, 1500, 0, 0, uh -huh. <laughs> not 15,000, but 1500. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, that's great. But that originally, it's, uh, it's a three by four painting. Uh -huh. that I uh, sold to in Toronto okay, from, cool. for a friend who just grew up, uh, well, his band grew up in that area, Fatal. Uh -huh. They just practiced in that area. Nice. And he saw that. So that's in Toronto? That. No, this one is in Montreal. Okay. In St. Henry, actually. Oh, okay, so they were, they were Torontonians like practicing in Montreal, living here at the time? Uh, they moved to Toronto. Mm -hmm. okay, they decided you. to move to the bigger city. Who does that? <laughs> I don't know. If you're going to move to the bigger city and move to New York or something. Yeah, exactly. Toronto. Toronto's like the, <laughs> the bootleg uh, New York, yeah. I think. <laughs> no disrespect or... No know, disrespect. No I love to Toronto. Toronto. Toronto's cool. <laughs> you know, we love Toronto. But when you live in Montreal, sometimes it's like... Why would you move to Toronto other yeah. than you want to make more money? So, which and sometimes that's a fact. And lose more money. Really? <laughs> oh, because you got to pay higher rents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever thought of moving somewhere else other than Montreal? Oh, uh, lately I've been kind of thinking about that. But it's hard when uh, you also have a kid. You know, I share my my kid with my ex you know and she comes one week with me one week with her and right you know maybe one of these days you know but i'd like to live somewhere warm no winter but i i'm kind of used to the whole coldness of montreal if you had a option say uh kaya is old enough she moved out and you got some money uh where would you want to move out I'd still want to be in the somewhat of the city, but closer, close, close to the uh, nature as well. I think I would go with, I think I'd go with California. Even though it's on fire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but New York, New York also has that same grittiness like Montreal. Yeah, so East I think, Coast vibes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's what we like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, like sometimes, like, it's as hard. A, as the a question is very hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I think it's nice to be able to, like, jump from place to place or to have a base yeah. in Montreal, which is cheap and nice, mm -hmm. and then just go to different places and spend, like, exactly. a month here and there, but yeah. always have your nice base in a place that you're comfortable in. I'd want to go back to the Philippines for sure. Nice. Well, I hope you yeah. manifest that sometime mm -hmm. when things are allowed, when we can travel again. Eh? Yeah. But are we, aren't we allowed now, though? I don't, like, I don't know what the rule <laughs> I think Canadians can go other places, but, you know, like, you know, you got to put, what, two weeks in quarantine and, like, there's no activities and you can't do a show, so mm -hmm. can't paint murals. Like, technically, yeah. I could go to different places places of the states but i'm kind of like using this whole covid time as an excuse to just chill out a little bit yeah like i've been, on You've been the moving quite a bit <laughs> i've been traveling a lot the last few years and it's been blessed and fun but you're, it's also being very exhausting you're an inspiration chris <laughs> oh, like, thanks, it, man. it's it's crazy well you you two are more <laughs> hardcore than me like as a musician with a band you know doing shows yeah, every night that's but yeah. you know uh i just do the art thing like oh paint my mural at this festival and then i'll you know chill out and hide but yeah, no, it's been nonstop and I've been mm -hmm. kind of like chasing my success and abundance and at one point you, you get it and then you're like, okay, well, you, you got what you wanted. Can yeah. you stop now? Can you just enjoy <laughs> and smell the flowers? No, and... I think you'll, you'll just keep competing with yourself. Like, <laughs> right, but th that's my decision, right? Yeah. Like, at one yeah. point, I like, want to do that. <laughs> well, yeah, basically, there, there's a point, there's a line you have to like draw for yourself where it's like, okay, when do I stop always wanting more? Mm -hmm. You know, and when I did my big show in Miami, where I, you know, end of 2018, during yeah. Miami Art Basel, I rented this warehouse, uh, got, had all my art there, sold some big paintings. It was kind of like, all right, I did this big thing to prove that I'm a big artist and blah, 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 mm -hmm. and I got money and blah, blah, and, and now what? 
Do I go, gotta go and do the, the a bigger, bigger one. thing <laughs> to even one up that and show people I'm even bigger of an artist? Or do not, I just not chill? necessarily or bigger, I, but like a different vibe? I well, don't know. Or, or, always... or do I just chill out and go lie by the beach and enjoy the success that I've created for myself? You know. And that's kind of what I did the, the, the year after I went to India just for mm -hmm. fun. I spent a month there and now I want to spend my, my, my winters in Peru not necessarily working, you know, maybe yeah. deflecting work and just enjoying and painting for myself. So mm -hmm. if I can afford to not work, mm -hmm. maybe I'll do more of that. I can always do more art, always one up the art, but yeah. the whole career success, yeah. you know, uh, flexing as they call it. Yeah, I'm kind of getting over it. You kind of got to keep it up to some degree. If not, people are like, we'll move on to the next artist and they forget you. And, you know, I also want to keep the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the I abundance mean, I created for myself. Yeah. But. I mean, with me, like, I, I, I'm I, still at the stage of, like, I have to please the customer uh, more than I, I have to please myself. You know, like, with, with the art, you know, because, you know, I'm just... I, I'm just started. I just started. Like, I'm still very small. But you're doing but, great. Two years? Yeah. And you got a great body of work. I, I, I can't yeah. wait till you do a solo show <laughs> yeah. at, a, at an actual gallery mm -hmm. and sell sell out like, yeah. all these beautiful, amazing paintings at a very affordable price. One of these days, but I think I need bigger the uh, bigger pieces. You know, it does. <laughs> yeah, but bigger pieces are harder to sell because yeah. they take you longer and... Mm -hmm. And then you need to get some rich people in the door. And that's people we don't really know too no. much, people like you and me. That's uh, true, too. But the smaller pieces, yeah. like, oh, I can sell that for something that a dude mm -hmm. like us could buy. Be like, yeah. oh, I love that artist. I want that in my home. So, true. you know, it mm -hmm. takes you. I, I think there's time to do both. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger piece, at least when I make it, when I make a bigger piece, yeah. I know I probably won't sell it. Or if mm -hmm. I sell it, it might it's take It's more me. for yourself. Like, it's more yeah. for me. You know, yeah. like I'm doing this piece, so it's in my house, so I know I can do this thing. Mm -hmm. And I probably won't sell it. And I'm okay with not selling it because yeah. I want to fucking enjoy this thing yeah. that I made for myself. Um, but yeah, and then there's murals, you know. Yeah. Murals is the next level of something big. That's my next step into picking up the can because like but at the same time uh, we talked about this last time like uh i feel like to do a mural in my head you know you have to pick up the can but i think you told me or either someone else was like why don't you just pick up a brush it's okay it's the same thing you can right. still use a brush just but need, I like think... big buckets of paint and yeah just around. <laughs> like that lee uh, scratch perry that's yeah. brush right that's brush yeah, and it's that's brush. huge and that's yeah. nice yeah if anything, I find when the canvas is bigger, when the uh, when you got even a mural-sized canvas, mm -hmm. and you gave a big brush, you got so much more space to get in all these different details and minuances right. that you might not be able to get with a small brush and a small yeah. canvas. Yeah. So I don't know. I think uh, there's something nice to be done on a bigger canvas for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you might have known. Now. You're a person, going back to the music two seconds, mm -hmm. uh, you are a person who does reggae music mixed with a little bit of punk. Right? Not so much not so much the sound, but more the attitude. Because I, I grew up with punk rock and like not being like, you know, the whole soul of punk rock is, is not perfection. It's just like my work. It's not perfection. It's, it's, okay. it's okay if you... Sounds like shit, right? You know, <laughs> but you gotta have some soul into there. Totally. Like that's it, where I. It's even preferred when it's like got yeah. like rough edges than if yeah. it's all cleaned. Exactly. In studio mode. And uh, yeah, with my that's how I, I. Like kind of went with that vibe with my music. I I love reggae music, but I wasn't so much into the spiritual side, uh, but more of a life. Uh, just my life experiences. But so you're not Rastafarian? Uh, I would say that I'm a Rastafarian for yeah. sure. I you, am a Rastafarian. You, got, you in... got bigger dreads than most Rasta. <laughs> Show that beaver tail of yours. There it is. <laughs> well, it's not officially yeah. a beaver tail. I am a Rastaman, but I, I'm in Babylon, living in Babylon. That's how I would say it. Right, and, totally. Yeah. So it's more like... Different people got different opinions of what being a Rasta is. Mm -hmm. People, it's like, oh, it's a religious thing that mm -hmm. points to Ethiopia and the black culture. Mm -hmm. 
And other people say like, no, it's about one love and all races coming mm -hmm. together under the vibration that Selassie I mm -hmm. was putting out there. Yeah. But it's a spiritual oneness that we can all live. Yeah. Peace within yourself so you can spread it to others. That's what I think Rastafari is. And, uh, you know, you can't, there's nothing else I could, you know, add to that. You have to have peace within yourself in order to be peaceful with everyone else. Right. So the fact that you're uh, Asian or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Filipino race, has that mattered to anybody in this music genre that only, usually is for Caribbean Only people? to people who uh, don't understand it, you know. Some of my Jamaican friends who are Rastaman think it's like it doesn't matter, you know. Like, mm -hmm. but there are some uh, who call themselves Rasta men and practice just like uh, they don't have peace within themselves and they just spread hate and that's what they don't like, you know. That's what I don't like. Nobody should, you know, spread hate, you know. Mm -hmm. Who do, you realness. who do you say in the music world is the one who's put out that true Rasta vibration out the best? Hmm. I think uh, the man, uh, Toots Hibbert, he's the man. He didn't wear locks, mm -hmm. but he spread peace within his music. Right. You know, he didn't have all the bells and whistles. He didn't have to take a picture smoking the joint in right. front of people you know but he brought without screaming Rastafari he was Rastafari totally. because he's he doesn't have to say it mm -hmm. you know it's it's uh, like I feel a lot of people have to like brag and boast to prove something but sometimes you just gotta feel it that right. someone's this or that way there's a saying that says uh, <coughs> Those who say they know usually don't know. Yeah. And those who know, they just don't say it. They just are it. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, Toots, who just passed away a couple of weeks ago, more or mm -hmm. less. Uh, yeah, great uh, example of that vibe. Who else do you like? Who's your favorite, like, musicians uh, or even, like, painters and artists? Who's your inspirations and people you look up to? I look up to you, man. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm you. for real. <laughs> like thank you you like i came to your house and you bring out all this art like every little uh, like no joke i'm not just saying it just because i'm in your show but like <laughs> just uh, you're my first uh like artist friend who i actually seen um you work so hard on e each piece i've never seen that before i've never had a a friend where i could witness that you know You're my inspiration, man. Like, oh, you've been doing it for, what, 20-some 20, 20 years? Uh, well, I'm 41. I, I, as a career? As a career? Since 2003. But I went to school for eight years. Yeah. And before that, I was also doing art. It's, mm -hmm. it's a life. It's I'm a, a life. lifer, for sure. Yeah. Ever since I was pretty. Yeah, I love you too, doggy. But, Sonny. Sonny, come here. <laughs> come here, bud. Come on. Let's take a little break. Come on. Come on. Yeah, so you're you're my inspiration. I don't. Aww, thanks, um, man. It's a good thing I put you on the first show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's uh, as far as musically, uh, I've always loved Joe Strummer mm -hmm. because he wasn't. He didn't care about. He didn't really care so much about what they sounded like. It's, it's all about the message mm -hmm. to him. Joe Strummer know? was the singer of the Clash. The Clash. That's it. Yeah, and he, then he had a, his own uh, solo project at the end before he died. Yeah, exactly, the Mescaleros. And, yeah, he's just, uh, him and Toots Hibbert is my, them together is what I want to do. And with a sprinkle, a sprinkle a little bit of uh, Otis Redding in there, because <laughs> I, I love soul music. I'm well, a sucker for soul music. You're a great singer, so I hope at the end of the show I can get you to like play a little music to uh, show that vibes. Mm -hmm. Um, you were saying how uh, Toots didn't smoke weed. What about you? Do you smoke weed? No, I, I used to. I used to smoke a lot, but then I just, uh, it just wasn't for me. I just get 
paranoid and and I know it's about the strain of weed you're smoking but I I feel like it's not it's not it's not necessary right that's another thing that like somebody who has dreadlocks mm -hmm. and plays in a reggae band I know I'll sign something past your joints like no oh, sorry I don't smoke it might shock a person and be like what <laughs> you're breaking my stereotype for you yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to put you in a neat little box Exactly. And exactly what you yeah. to do. <laughs> exactly. Like like when when I went to the mountain the other day, I got asked like at least five times if I have weed on. Me. Like, <laughs> here, Rasta man, you have you have, you have some piff? He asked me. <laughs> what the <laughs> that's, hell is that? That's what the cool kids call weed nowadays. Oh Jesus! I don't, I don't know the lingo <laughs> of, the, of the youngins. Yeah. So, um, how has this? year treated you you're, you're still fairly new on your visual art career mm -hmm. and uh you know you're still doing your music you can do your music in the studio maybe not touring how, mm -hmm. how's 2020 being for you has it been a good thing a bad thing challenging it's you know what it's like kind of the same thing besides uh, from not being on the road uh it's been kind of the same <laughs> art wise bless you Mm -hmm. Because you know I'm I'm in either in my studio, or at home painting, right? Or sometimes I would like to paint outside of home. It gives me more inspiration. Like artists are already all all the time on quarantine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Painting and being by themselves, and then they say like, you know, I think we only get like rebellious and like, hey, yeah. what are you doing? Is because now we're forced to do it. And it's like, hey, don't tell me what to do. Yeah, I'm yeah. a free soul. <laughs> I stay home because I want to. <laughs> Yeah, when everyone, when, when, when the government was like, all right, everyone, lock down. Mm -hmm. All the artists and the creatives are all like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> we have to be with ourselves. <laughs> Again, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Do you got any hope for the world of ours? I mean, I do. I always try to keep it, uh, keep a good positive mind towards it. But sometimes it's really hard. Like yesterday, you know. Usually I don't talk about this in an interview, but like sometimes you just need a good cry, mm -hmm. you know? You need to release that, and it's 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 necessary because sometimes you know artists, like I said earlier, have that. Uh, I think all artists have that self doubt feeling, and yesterday was just like really, it was a lot, and I felt like I need. I haven't cried in a very long time, and I felt wow. like it it needed to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah order. it's 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 such a great release for men it's difficult at least for me my dad mm -hmm. was since i was early would tell me like chris don't cry men don't cry yeah. you're not supposed to exactly. cry but i was very sensitive i mm -hmm. get, i think that's why he would tell me not to cry because he didn't want my feminine side to come out because in peru it's like a negative thing yeah. to be feminine when you're a man even nowadays with your friends you know like Oh, you cried. Oh, poor Danny. They're all, I bet you, you, you guys are saying that right now. <laughs> but oh. it's, you know, it's reality, man. Yeah. Like, you, you need to uh, release it that way. Definitely have cried a lot this year. Mm -hmm. Usually I need mushrooms to get into that mm -hmm. zone of sensitivity where I can just let mm -hmm. the cry out. But then yeah. it comes out very aggressive, like, Wah! Yeah. Wah! like hard. Like, yeah. I, I feel bad for my neighbors. <laughs> Who must feel like they either think you're having sex <laughs> or what's going on with Chris? <laughs> Chris is very melancholic in his sexual activity by himself. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I got another question for you. Mm -hmm. This is a question I want to do all my guests. Do mm -hmm. you believe things like art and music can help heal the world? I mean, it's the only thing we got. That's the, it's it's what we got. Like, oh, how else are we gonna save the world? It's the it's the easiest way to spread the message, I think, without anyone being bored with talking, someone trying to explain something. Sometimes you get lost, you know. Especially nowadays, people have a really low attention span, and I, f I find music and art it's there right in front of you. It's almost you know? like we can create our own propaganda for the good yeah. side. No one's paying us to create the positive propaganda to heal the world. Yeah. But it's in our hands to yeah. like uh, fight back from the negative propaganda that's being shooted at us left and right from all the mainstream medias yeah. and news and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, like yeah. they're just throwing, so, uh, throwing such a hard code of 
superficiality and exactly. just, you know, obedience in a way that <laughs> we have to, like, uh, put out this rebel vibe, you know? You, yeah. I'm sure your real name is not Danny Rebel. <laughs> uh, it's why, my, it's wh- my birth name. <laughs> <laughs> why did you choose Danny Rebel? What are you rebelling against? I'm rebelling against what everyone else is doing, I guess, at the time. And in my position that time, like, everyone was doing, like, punk music or, like, heavy music. And I wanted to uh, use reggae music to rebel. Mm -hmm. And I was always that, oh, I'm different kind of guy. But, like, I've always wanted to do something out of the ordinary. I love weird. That's why I call myself an alien. Because... You know, I love, I embrace my weirdness, even my humor sometimes. People would be like, is that, that guy okay? Mm. Is he, like, on drugs? But no, this, I was born like this. Mm-hmm. This is me. You're, you're very <laughs> unique. You're, you're, for me, like, if it was, like, you know, an award for Montreal's best dressed or most original... Yes. You, you always got the styles, you know. Bless, and I respect man. that because I'm kind of boring in my presentation. But then again, I just like to be a Jedi in the in the background. The spotlight's <laughs> on me more than I feel comfortable. So mm-hmm. in my normal life, I just want to be undercover. But that's great if you can always shine like mm-hmm. the sun on every I got to. I and, think I need to. And show them that they also can just be whatever the fuck they want to be and not fear like what yeah. others will think, mm-hmm. you know? So when I hang out with somebody like you who's just very much himself, mm-hmm. I love that because like, fuck it, why am I afraid mm-hmm. of being myself? I just want to shine like the sun. And if exactly. people can't handle the light, that's their issue, not mine. Why do I got to take other people's <laughs> issues, huh? <laughs> that's why I chose the color yellow today. Oh, Because you know, I love the sun. And my dog's name is Sunny. Uh, I, yellow's my favorite <laughs> color. Yeah. And I'm yeah. a sun worshiper, whatever that means. So. Same. <laughs> yeah. Same. So you did it perfect today. Yeah. So do you have any uh, final message to the viewers of this brand new show? You're in the first episode. Do you um, have any like, final words to young artists or just to people or anybody watching out there on planet Earth? Uh, my message is to not be so hard on yourself. I know like a lot of us are on our phones and especially artists when they see an, an artist producing all this work and this and that, don't feel bad that you're not doing as much, you know, it all comes with the vibes and, uh, just be nice to yourself. That's all. That's my message. Be nice to yourself. (laughs) That's a great message. That's so crucial, you know? Yeah. Compassion. Yeah. You know, the compassion you have for yourself, the compassion you have for others. You know, we want to make the world a better place. And we exactly. can't do it if we're always fighting each other because we're afraid of each other. Yeah. You know? We got to yeah. love ourselves. We Not so much we're afraid. Others. I think we just don't understand mm-hmm. each other sometimes. But that's where the fear comes. Yeah. Because we project yeah. onto others like, oh, I don't get him. So it's different from me. So uh, Absolutely. And, and then you just put all these layers on top to kind of defend yourself from something that's not even attacking you. Mm-hmm. And even if something was attacking you, the problem is in them, not, not in you. And you don't really even have to defend yourself. You just got to kind of like accept them and move mm-hmm. along, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this is the end of the show. It was a great, <laughs> lovely conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to be this interviewer, you know. Usually I'm the interviewee. You're doing great, Chris. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I hope I did well. Um, I would love if you did the jingle to the beginning of my, of my show. I'm going to do it. And I, Hands I, I, down. I'm I'll do really it. excited. <laughs> but would you like to play us a little song, whatever you want here, to show us some vibes? Sure. I mean, this I just broke a string, but I'll use my ukulele. Okay. <laughs> Found a pistol in the kitchen and my fingers in the trigger Woke up to the wolves 
wolves are howling in the night. You got this sign of light through the dark. Prepare for ignition, need a spark. It's getting out to see where you are. Your hand is so close yet so far. I really hope that every little thing is alright. I don't judge you for your wrong. As long as you just sing my song, know that you want your mistakes. We all need to take a break from the wheel. Learn to feel broken passes or makes us all steal to survive through the night. Broken dreams is what makes us all lie. Doing drugs, selling stuff. Yeah, the money is never enough. Through the stars, broken heart, why we're so lost. We lost our feeling. Was once a tree. And we're guilty and we burn it with a match and gasoline. And we walk with no remorse and with ease to go to sleep. Go to So lost, we lost our feeling. Was once a tree, and we're guilty, and we burn it with a match and gasoline. Oh, and we walk with no remorse and with ease. Next week, my guest will be Germ D. But the feeling now, knowing that I've earned it through art, not through drugs, I pay all my bills, I own my cars, and uh, I treat my son to a great life, and none of it's with drugs, um, it's one of the best feelings in the world. When I grew up, punk is a big thing in Montreal. Uh, DIY, doing it yourself, and really, that has changed over the years, and now punk is not exactly what it was when I was a kid, but to me, punk meant you're doing it yourself. And that goes all the way to artisan making their own beers and liquors. It's still punk if you're doing it yourself and you're trying to, you're, you're making it your own. So make sure to subscribe, like, and everything else. Big thanks, and see you next week. Peace.